and many folks from out of state as well. So if you're not from Wisconsin, welcome. Welcome to our humble state. We like it here. I've lived in Wisconsin 17 years, but I've been close to Wisconsin almost my whole life. I was a farm boy from Iowa, but been here uh, la uh, much of the latter portion of my life. And then, uh, let's see, so, clicker. So just if you weren't aware, so maybe you're in Wisconsin and maybe you aren't even aware of some of this stuff, uh, but we're the number one. There's some cheese curds on the table just to be festive, but help yourself to those. Uh, we're the number one cheese producing state. We're the number two dairy, second to California, I believe, is ahead, but those two kind of fit together. Uh, we're something like the number 10 manufacturing state, but I also realized we're the number one per capita, which is kind of cool. So lots of manufacturing, which is I spent where I spent most of my career, just short of 25 years in manufacturing. Uh, the downside is we're actually the fourth worst. There was a RAND study, I think a new one's coming out maybe this fall, we're the fourth worst, highest healthcare cost state. I was talking to someone in Ohio the other day, and he's like, so where are you guys at? You know, like 160% of Medicare? No, like more like three to 400% of Medicare. Um, so that's why we're here, right? And then also, if you weren't aware, we do like to have fun in Wisconsin. So we like to drink a little bit. Um, in fact, and if you don't, this, there's different studies out there, but if you look, we're like 12 out of the 15 top drinking cities. So uh, you'll probably find out later. We like to have fun and we can handle our alcohol pretty well. We can put it down. And so there's another chart as well, if you see. So we just, it's too much to list, so we just say all of them. But we do have, we knew, know how to have fun. So just a little bit about this movement. We'll talk as we go, right? And lots of great speakers. But to me, there are two big levers, two big parts to this healthcare, free market healthcare movement, as we call it. We're trying to bust monopolies. We're just monopolies control, the sellers control. We want to open that up. The buyers should have power. The buyers should have choice. And the buyers should be able to chop for value. That's all we're really after. Uh, but it's like a rowboat. So, right, if you had a rowboat and one oar is rowing, that rowboat's going in circles. Or if you have one oar that's slower, it's not going straight. And so we need two parts. We need buyer and seller. Buyers are in the commercial side, over half of the members in, actually quite a bit more in Wisconsin, something like 67%. But I think about half the members are on commercial, which means employer plans. So how employers do healthcare determines how much of the communities, the employees, right, and their families do healthcare. They're within the game you've created. So that or is important. And then the other or is the seller side, having shoppable healthcare. We don't really care where it is. We're not against anyone. It could be a hospital, uh, but we want to know price and we want to know quality, or it could be independence, which is a lot of the movements. We're essentially building this new system next to the old system in terms of healthcare providers. And in Wisconsin, we can now outsource pretty much all of outpatient care if we want to. It's not a specific goal. We just want value. We want a fair price and we want high quality. So you'll see people from both sides of the rowing both oars, if you will, of that. And both of those need to grow at the same, roughly the same. And if one of those don't grow, then the whole movement dies. So it's really important. So any Packer fans in the room, I'm just, just a hunch. Hey, all right. So uh, I heard someone say the other day, he said, so watching football is, is there's 22 people on the field that are in desperate need of rest. And there's 50,000 people in the stands in desperate need of exercise, right? And so that kind of leads me into, right? So it's really cool to come and watch a conference and watch speakers. But really, we want to get in the game, right? It's important that all of us are in this game and not just on the bench or observing. The more of us that get in this game, and I think this is, we're already moving fast in Wisconsin. This isn't in question, but we're, we're multiplying and it's growing and it's now it's now becoming reality. It's no longer a question of, to me, for the free market is the future of healthcare. And Wisconsin is one of the leading states in the nation. And then just a couple more quick ones here. So this gives you, I won't go through this in detail, but to give you how fast is Wisconsin growing? So we have many employers getting in the game. In 2020, there was an article in Madison that said we had 15 DPCs. We have 125 today. Is that not crazy, right? So there are many of those doctors, nurses in, in the, here today. Thank you for what you're doing because you're making that happen. And um, we're, you're giving us good alternatives to shop for high quality 
healthcare. Some of the other highlights right there. And then we say, well, 70%, but this inpatient stuff, this uh, ER stuff, we can't interrupt yet. Well, there's a micro, they weren't able to be here today, but there's a micro hospital just open in Green Bay and a micro hospital opening in Milwaukee that has extremely affordable care. So we're even starting to delve into that. We can already interrupt oncology. We can already find value in, in heart, in non-emergent heart surgeries. Oklahoma Heart is the closest for that. Most of it's local oncology. We have Twin Cities, Manitowoc, Chicago. Um, but if, would you fly to Oklahoma if you needed heart surgery, if we give you $2,500 and pay for all your travel in a companion? Most people would, especially one of the best surgeons, a really high quality surgery team, right? Keith Smith, Keith, I saw Keith earlier. Where are you at, Keith? Put you on the spot. He's a speaker here. So, but Keith helped set all that up. He deserves credit for that. But that's all available. And, and I went, the first time I met Keith in like 17 or 18, I said, we just did a $300,000 heart surgery. And he asked me some questions. He said, we could have done that for 30. Maybe there's some inflation since then. But, but you get the idea, right? With a really high quality surgeon. This, uh, these bullets, surgery centers, this DSC, I call it, DPC, independent primary care, direct primary care, plus direct surgery, uh, specialty care, sorry, DSC, those two together, new surgery centers, infusion centers, imaging centers, three year, just three years ago, if you take, there's only three of those bullets on this chart. Those are all new in the last three years. That's how fast this is growing. These are doctors having courage and doing what they know is best. All right, and we'll keep removing here one more. Um, and so I just found this funny. I saw this recently. It's the last one. We're going to jump, and then we'll go to John Trinas here. Um, right, this kind of this notion that when we drive transformational change, right, where there's an old norm, which is a broken health system, which is non-transparent, unaffordable, et cetera, can't even get in, takes months to get in, to this new way uh, we just want to, we just want better healthcare. And there's so much going on to me. I've been using the phrase golden rule compliant. Is that really the way you'd want healthcare, right? Or is that just how you're making a lot of money off of me? Right? So just this notion that we're kind of like Americans are hurting Americans and Wisconsinites are hurting Wisconsinites. We've got to stop that. How about we just do things in a way that we find a win-win? We just find a win-win because the only ones that are sustainable is the win-win. Win-loses are not sustainable and that's the norm, right? Still. Uh, although we're changing things, that's still the norm. We just want to find a win-win. And I, I should introduce myself for those that don't know me. So Jonathan Barron, Matt and I started this fun adventure called Self Fund Health together, co-founder, CEO. And in addition to Matt, I also want to thank our sponsors. So everyone who is outside here, because honestly, without them, we couldn't have put this on. So another big round of applause for them. And two, I'm just going to take a couple minutes of your time because I think there are two really important messages that I want you to hear just coming from our perspective at Self Fund Health. So the first, let me take a quick story. Um, in a previous life, uh, I worked within the big hospital systems, and specifically, I worked in the EMR systems. And we worked on a project at that time, and the project was that we wanted to introduce pricing information real time into the into the doctor right into the point of view of the doctor so as they were putting together a treatment plan they could know the cost of the health care right so there was a whole bunch of work that was put in place there's a bunch of it work that was put in place and do you know what the result of that was it failed now why did it fail actually why it failed was because the doctors said they didn't want to know that information it was clouding their clinical judgment, right? And so this is part of the challenge that we have today. And I think this is just a great example, right? And, and from my perspective too, I, before this, I ran a healthcare company for 10 years. I've always been passionate about this healthcare cost problem that we have. But the reality was I ran a company for 10 years and I didn't know the answer to simple questions like, why is our healthcare so darn expensive? Why doesn't insurance help us drive down the cost? Why don't employers do something about it? Why do we keep, why does all of this keep perpetuating, right? And this is the theme one of really what we're trying to accomplish today is education, right? Because I would argue 
that I think the majority of people, maybe like you are a very educated bunch just by the fact that you're here, but many people that are actual decision makers that can actually drive meaningful change in healthcare today just don't know. And it's because this healthcare is so complex that no single person really understands the totality of it. You talk to doctors, they know their piece. You talk to insurance companies, they know their piece. You talk to the big medical record systems like Epic, they know their little piece. But no one, actually, very few take a step back and understand the totality of what's going on, right? And the why behind it. So that's the first piece that I hope you take out of to the next day and a half is just a little bit of education, a little bit of learning for some area that you might not have known about before because the best tool that we have to fight this is just simply education. Because I would argue that when you see and what you hear, you cannot unsee and unhear at, after you walk away over the next day and a half. Um, so that is really, that's really part one. Part two, when Matt and I and the team were putting together this idea, we came up with this name, Don't Feed the Beast, right? And the idea behind it, you know, we, we meant to really kind of make a statement. And in particular, we chose a name that might even be a little inflammatory, right? And I know there are some people in the audience, because we've heard from you, that are like, I'm just here because I want to know if I'm the beast. Am I the beast? I don't know if I'm the beast. But so here's the, the, the honest truth around this. None of you are the beast. The beast is not a person. The beast is not an entity. The beast is a set of behaviors that is perpetuating this healthcare industrial complex that we are all here to do something to fight against, right? And so it's the behavior, it's not the person. And I'm serious when I say this because I really truly believe that our ability to push this movement forward is going to be by bringing everyone together, all the different constituents of this whole ecosystem, and driving towards something better. So I would urge you, I would urge the speakers, I would urge you in your conversation to think through people, think about the entities that you might think of as being the beast through a different light. Because there's a famous Charlie Munger saying that goes something along the lines of, show me the incentive and I'll show you the outcome, right? This kind of speaks to my first point. All, every one of us think we're doing really good work in our little corner of the healthcare ecosystem. But when you take a step back and understand the bigger picture, that's when you get, begin to get a flavor for what's actually going on. So that, those are my two quick things. Hopefully today you come away a little better educated, better understanding, but then also approach each entity that you may think of as the beast in the ecosystem Approach it with a little compassion and a little understanding, and hopefully, collectively, we can get to a better spot in the end. But at the end of the day, let's not feed that darn beast. Thank you.